Kodak Black is finally free. Again. Me and the Notification Gang would like to invite everybody to come join us Monday through Thursday, 9.20 to 10 o'clock for Morning Coffee, where we discuss the events of the prior day and also just talk mess about stuff. See you then. Oh, Black Dynamite, I wish it was that simple, but this is much bigger than you and me. Hey, little mama. It may be bigger than you, and it may be bigger than me, but it ain't bigger than you and me. Can you dig it? BBN, Jack Frost. What's up, party people? Alright, so... Yeah. So apparently, Kodak Black has been granted a release on $550,000 bond, but he also has to serve house arrest. House arrest. For ever, so for everybody that don't know, because I'm pretty sure there's a couple of people that are confused why he was actually arrested in the first place, they're probably like, yo, they just trying to put a brother in the penitentiary. You know how dudes give it up. But no, he actually did commit something that is considered a crime. Now, if you think it shouldn't be a crime, or if you think even if it is a crime, Kodak Black should get away with it, that's just two totally different conversations. So real quick, I'll explain the crime that he committed, and then we'll go a little bit further. Okay, so basically, he went to go buy some weapons. He went to get uh, whatever weapons he went to get. He actually received a... Uh, nine millimeter a mini draco and a 38 caliber handgun those are the weapons he actually received he tried to buy uh different weapons at different times the two times that he went to go purchase these weapons he had to fill out a you know a a, a pamphlet or, or something like you know you have to fill out paperwork so on the paperwork it asks you are you currently going to uh court for any crimes that you might serve more than a year for. He put no, he wasn't. Now, the thing that you have to remember is he has that trial that's supposed to be happening, I believe in South Carolina, where he allegedly, allegedly raped the female. Now, real quick for the people that don't understand what the hell that case is about. There was a girl, she came back to his room. She was of age. She came back to his room. They were going to have sex. She wanted him to put on a condom. He didn't want to put on a condom. So then she didn't want to have sex anymore. And he allegedly took it. So that's what that case is about. Anyway, so we have this particular case. And uh, his attorney, Bedford Cohen, said the rapper owes 600000 pardon me, owns a $600,000 house in Florida, and that's what they're going to use as collateral for the bond. Uh, they also added that uh, he voluntarily turned himself when he learned there was a warrant for his arrest in the weapons case. So I, I don't know what they're talking about. They said he showed up, he went into custody, there was no problem. So it sounds to me like that arrest that was made at the or the detention or the arrest or whatever that whatever that was that happened at the rolling loud i think they're trying to say that they knew he was going to get arrested and they still showed up and went through with it it sounds to me like that's what they're they, they're trying to say i'm not 100 percent sure um they do say in florida he was charged at different times with drugs weapons robbery sexual assault probation violation and fleeing officers so you have to assume that them still giving him more bond to put him back out on the street. This is something. I mean, you have an individual who consistently gets into trouble and you have a, what it looks like, it's not something that he's going to stop getting into. And it says that the prosecutor also said at one point, and I'm quoting him here, wherever he goes, your honor, there's going to be guns, drugs, and shooting, shootings. This is what the prosecutor said in court. So I guess that's what the prosecutor was saying in hopes that he would be held, he would be remanded, and they were not going to let him out. But he has a lot of money, and he has the resources. So, hey, I guess the, the government is like, you know what? That house is looking mighty fine. So, you know, I don't know. Anyway, uh, there's a good chance it seems like he can't stay out of jail. He can't stay out of situations. So I wouldn't be surprised if he gets himself into a new 
problem. I just, I just, I just wouldn't be surprised. It's just not something that's going to surprise me. Um, Kodak Black has a propensity for bucking the law for deciding to not go through with things that he need to do. Now, with that being said, there's ways that he might be able to get around the whole gun thing because it could always be said, I'm guessing, I'm guessing this could be said that he didn't necessarily fill out his own paperwork that somebody else filled out the paperwork and they filled it out incorrectly because they might not have been privy to the South Carolina uh, problem that he currently has. Or they might be saying that um he was under the belief that those charges would be dropped. Maybe I'm, I'm just, I'm just throwing stuff at the wall right now, seeing what stick to be honest with you, but I'm pretty sure that there's ways that they might be able to get around this paperwork that he filled out, especially if it could be proven that he did not physically fill the paperwork out. Because if it can be proven that somebody else actually filled out the paperwork, then they can they could chalk it up to just a misunderstanding or someone not understanding the question or somebody not knowing the extent of his criminal uh part of me I don't want to say criminal he hasn't been convicted but of his uh court history somebody not knowing the the full extent they could be like oh man I, I thought that was over with no we ain't go to court for that in like nine months. I thought that was I thought that was over with. So you know that could all that is always something that could be said or assumed. So I don't know. We're gonna we're gonna see what's going on. Definitely everybody put it down in the comment section. I want to know what y'all think about this whole Kodak Black situation. When I look at the situation, I'm not gonna lie to you. I see a young man who consistently gets into trouble. It seems like the it's just every other day he's into something, and when he's not in trouble. He's trolling people, so it just seems like he's always in trouble. I think that's the uh, biggest downfall of just randomly trolling people because you're in the public eye. I get it. We haven't forgotten about you. The public remembers who you are. But at the same time, you're an individual who have a lot of negativity attached to you, and you have to decide whether that's something that you want. If do you want people to consistently or do you want people's first impressions of you to be something that's negative? Do you want somebody's first impressions of you to be you were somebody that started a lie or you were somebody that was trolling somebody or you were somebody that that spoke about somebody, a man, another man's wife right after he passed away or you were somebody that you understand what I'm saying? You don't you might not necessarily want that type of attention, although you might want attention. You might not want that type of attention. You understand? It's like the little boy that falls. And then, you know, the little kid, the uh, three-year-old, he falls. People laugh. So he stands up and then he, 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 he falls on purpose again because he wants to, people to, to like him. He wants that response. And that kind of is how Kodak Black comes off sometimes. He seems to be a really talented young man. I don't think that he has to do things to try to get people to like him. I think he has a pretty big and rabid fan base as we speak. So I don't know. Let me know what y'all guys think about this period. You think this stuff is going to stick. You think this case is going to stick or do you think it's going to go away? It's going to be something that we don't even remember next year. Something that we absolutely totally forgot. And one more caveat, this problem right here might be a reason for them in South Carolina to say, you know what? We're going to put a warrant out for you. We are not going to, we don't think you can stay out of trouble. We want to hold you until court. You don't know. That might be what their next move is. Don't forget the actual, uh, the, 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 the state's attorney for, uh, in, in Florida basically said to the judge that this is a guy that he can't stay away from shootings. He can't stay away from guns. He can't stay away from drugs. His actual quote is, wherever he goes, your honor, there's going to be guns, drugs, and shootings. Maybe this puts pressure on South Carolina to, you know, uh, stop whatever agreement they have and to call him in to hold him into court. Like, comment, subscribe. Join the notification gang. Hashtag Bronx Bombers. Let's get it. 
I love y'all. Take care of each other. Hug the kids for me. I haven't forgotten about you. And that's all I got on this one. I'm out. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. If you would like to help dictate the direction that this channel takes, please leave a comment. All comments are appreciated, whether positive or negative. Thank you very much and enjoy your day. And remember, positive thoughts cause for positive things to happen. Let's get it.